My friends, have you ever bought something really not knowing how to use it? And then you get it home and you figure out that you need something else to make it work. Well, that happened to me. I bought a Yesu ATAS 120 antenna kind of sight unseen. I figured, man, this thing would look badass on the back of my Jeep and it'll work really, really nice. I won't have to screw around with a bunch of stuff. I could do POTA. I could do mobile HF if I want. But I didn't realize that I needed something to go between the antenna and my ICOM IC705. Anyway, after searching the internet, high and low, searching YouTube, high and low, I found this little guy on eBay. This is the AX17 Pro. See, I got this thing home and I just started hooking wires up to power, trying to figure out if I could power the antenna separately. And I found out, no, you can't. So anyway, this is my story and these are my detailed instructions on how to get the AX17 hooked up right the first time, every time, this time on K6 UDA Radio. Let's do this. Guys, welcome back to the show. I'm Bob K6 UDA, and this is the K6 UDA Radio Show, both on Rumble over here at K6 UD slash K6 UDA and over on YouTube at YouTube slash K6 UDA. But if you want all of my content, you want to be over here on Rumble, not on YouTube because YouTube, they're not so good. Anyway, guys, uh, hey, all the ways you can help me out, it really does help me out and it keeps this uh, channel pretty much corporate sponsor free. Uh, as long as you share, subscribe, like, comment, do all that good stuff, you can catch me, like I said, over on Rumble, over on Gray Man Survival on X, and uh, we do the Nets on Saturday mornings. Please check that out. That is live streamed on Rumble exclusively. Uh, we do some really, really cool stuff over there. If you want more information, you can go over to s3films.com, get that information, and now back to the show. When you're using an ATAS 120 antenna, the antenna assumes that you're using a Yesu radio, a compatible Yesu radio. FT891, a 991, uh, hell, even the DX10 or the 710. In those radios, you have an antenna, uh, an antenna tuner configuration, and you tell it it's an ATAS. Well, as soon as you hit the tune button, it will move that antenna. It'll do, it does it for you automatically instead of using a tuner to fool the radio that everything is happy, happy, happy when it might not actually be happy when you use the ATAS tuner configuration, you're actually making the, uh, the antenna happy. You're tuning the antenna to the radio. Anyway, for those of us who don't have a compatible Yesu radio, or we don't intend to use a compatible Yesu radio, maybe we're going to use something like the ICOM IC705, but we want to use that really sleek looking ATAS antenna. This is the AX17 Pro, sold out of China. Uh, it's probably about a million dollars now with tariffs, but who cares? It does the job or it says it does the job. The problem with this antenna system are the instructions. It comes with a plethora of wires and cables to hook the thing up. The instructions to hook it up were piss poor. I live streamed trying to put this thing together and I didn't know 
anything. I thought, eh, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but I had obviously hooked this thing up all wrong. All right, so about a month ago, I get this email uh, from China, and I obviously I don't speak Cantonese, so a little Google Translate, and this is what you get. Uh, some friends came to me and said, you bought an AX-17 Pro and it encountered difficulties. So I went to your live video and I watched it very carefully. In order to accurately understand today, I specially went to buy professional translation headset. I'm very sorry, I don't speak English. I'm very sorry, I don't speak Chinese. Uh, used Google Translate. Thank you very much for buying our products. We are very sorry for the difficulties you have met. We will make improvements as soon as possible. Uh, the order sent out today has been tagged with a reminder. We are concerned that your AX-17 is not working properly. Please give me your delivery address in America and we will provide an M130A antenna and an AX-17 Pro free of charge for you to test. Uh, let's see, the AX-17 will detect SWR when tuning, and SWR can only be calculated when, in, when transmit is transmitted. So the input RF power of the AX-17 Pro is greater than three watts. Guys, when you're using the ICOM 705, hey, five watts, but probably better to plug it into a battery and have 10 watts available to you, minimum. From the AX17 uh, Pro to the current, or the AX17 to the current AX17 Pro, after seven years of continuous development, the current AX17 Pro has expanded a lot of useful functions. The AX17 Pro is reliable, but it has a bad manual. Customers in China will contact us from time to time after purchasing our products. We rely on web chat, telephone, and email to serve customers. We maintain good communication with more than a thousand customers for a long time, including amateur radio knowledge, and we have become very good friends. So the need for instructions became very small because we are the human manual, and the number of customers increased that became bad and we realized, therefore, a detailed manual is needed uh, to guide users to use it accurately. Let me serve you today. There are two types of transmitters available for the AX-17 Pro. First, the uh, default uh, type. ICOM, Kenwood, Yesu, Alenco, Coden SR transmitter, one key tuning. The ICOM 705 can also be one key tuning. The second type, all other HF transmitters, continuous transmit in FM or AM CW signals until the end of tuning, stop transmitting, tune is complete. According to the different working principles of the antenna, there are also two types in the AX-17 Pro, the Yesu ATAS 120, and we made the M130. There the same type. There's also a type of antenna that requires switching between the positive and negative DC power supplies, the Diamond SD330, the uh, little Tar Heel 2. There's a two-pin interface that is used to drive the SD330 or the little 2. When you gave the AX-17 Pro in your video, my heart was pounding and we were very lucky to have a good chip. Thank God it didn't explode into flames. The motor drive mount for the Diamond K9000. Two and three, you can only choose two of them. They should be the same two pin interface, the white cable. So just for reference, He's talking about this little cable right here. This one, two wires to this little pin here. Um, I got this wire. It had no instructions on it. Separate bag, no separate bag. Um, I figured, okay, 
two wires, one positive, one negative. I made my own cable. That is wrong. Do not do that. Bad. On this one, it says right here, do not connect to power. Don't do that. That's bad. The four pin cable is multi-purpose for the KX3, X6100, the AX17 uh, are used together. And this four pin cable provides power to the AX17 Pro. Most Chinese hams do not like the finished cable that is connected with the four pin cable and the three and a half inch audio cable. ICOM 705 cable. The uh, Yesu ATAS 120 requires uh, 11 to 15 volts to function properly. So Wang, the inventor of this, he draws me out this, uh, this diagram here. This is for the keying cable on the 705. If you strip off the end of the cable on the 705, you get a red, a white, and a uh, and an exposed ground wire. So this is how you want to hook it up to this, the ground, the blue, the yellow, the black. Just like that. These two are going to be external power. Wang goes on to say, I also don't have the AX17 Pro app on my iPhone. It is very difficult to get an app into the Apple app store in China, but we're working on it. So the Android app interface. So if you have an Android phone or an Android device, you can um, use that to control the AX17 Pro. Wang sent me more. These are all the cables that should come with your uh, AX17 Pro. If you decide to buy one of these when you order up your AX17, it's gonna come with a whole bunch of cables, a one foot patch cable with this. Uh, this goes from the AX17 to uh, say your radio. If you have a Yaesu radio like the 891 that has a DIN plug on the back, eight pin Yaesu DIN to nine pin AX17. This is the main cable if you have, say, an ICOM radio or a Kenwood radio or an Olinko, you're going to use this cable. If you're an ICOM guy, that'll be pretty familiar to you. That's the uh, antenna tuner connection. And then this one, I didn't know what that was for, and I screwed that one up the first time. This is the new updated 705 cable that uh, Wang sent me. It's got a nice long phono plug on there, the eighth inch photo, the eighth inch phono plug. And on the other end, all soldered up nice and uh, easy, easy peasy, uh, all the wires to run that. All you're going to need to do is hook up the two power wires there, uh, positive and negative. And you'll notice what I did when I soldered all my wires together. I uh, Mine doesn't look very pretty, but it works. So I soldered those three together. And then over here, I added some wire, put power poles on it. There's my connection there. I'm gonna swap that out. I'm gonna put the, uh, I'm gonna put that nice looking cable and put that to use for mine. But then you can also see that hooks up uh, onto this split cable here and that's all the cabling I need for the 705. If you want to make your own up, there it is right there. That's for the 705. Could be from something else too. And here's an adapter plug. If you're going from say Kenwood to the, uh, uh, to the ICOM side or the Olinko, there's your connections for that. There, the two pin wire, and that is for, that's to run the little Tar Heel 2 or the uh, K9 9000. Don't do that. That's what I did. And that's what screwed up the last machine that I had. The AX17 is pretty small, fits in the palm of your hand. 
Uh, on one side, there is the nine pin DIN connector that plugs in. Next to it is the uh, Bluetooth. And then there's the transmit side for the antenna. On the other side of the box is another SO239 that goes to the antenna. And here is your configuration for uh, all your pinouts. On the bottom of it are two LEDs. That is your manual up and down fine tune adjusting. To hook this up to the 705, first you're gonna plug in that nine pin connector into the side of the AX17 Pro. Then you're gonna plug your power poles into a power source. I plugged mine into a battery and you're gonna notice you have two LED blinking lights or actually one blinking light that is Bluetooth. Next, you're gonna plug the 705 plug side into the 705 and that's it. So now to do the test, uh, I broke out the brand new M130 antenna and we go ahead, put the uh, radio into digital. I'm just putting it into DV mode because I've got it. Uh, key it up and there it goes. It is moving the antenna and notice the SWR goes down to nothing. All right, next we're gonna try 20 meters. Go ahead and do that. Put it in DV mode and key the mic. And you're gonna notice it goes right down and tunes that antenna right up. Very, very cool. All right, let's change it up. We'll go to 17 meters now. Key the mic in DV and away we go. All tuned up. There it is. And our final test of the day, we'll go to 10 meters here. Let that go. And very quickly, we're tuned up on 10 meters. So if you want to use an ATAS 120 antenna and you don't want to get a compatible Yaesu radio, or you already have, say, an Icon radio or Kenwood radio you want to use, there's a way to do it, and it works. Anyway, guys, um, oh, you know what? I know, I know. All you guys are asking about this M130 antenna. This thing is fairly slick. We're gonna get to this again on a separate video. We'll talk about this one on a separate video. Anyway, guys, uh, hope you enjoyed it. Again, uh, if you did, give this video a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. Check your notifications if you haven't. Leave a comment for me. Let me know if you like this kind of content. If you want it to be shorter, longer, more detailed, less detailed, you tell me and uh, we're trying to make this channel better and better all the time anyway guys uh that's it i'm bob k6uda and i'm out of here seven three